Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video was sparked by a couple of headlines that I saw in the last few weeks that were announcing record profit growth from a couple of supermarkets here in the UK. They were specifically shouting about their women's wear departments and how they were beating the industry standard for growth at the time. And that kind of got me curious about why that is like I didn't think supermarket fashion was that big of a thing here um, I guess I never shopped supermarket fashion my family didn't my friends don't so it was just kind of something that was unknown to me but I started digging a little bit and I found some shocking statistics. 20 years ago, supermarket fashion accounted for less than 10% of all clothing and footwear sales here in Britain. Today, that number has ballooned to 25%. Isn't that insane? And it kind of makes Tesco and Asda's record women's wear profits make sense. So George, which is Asda's clothing line, welcomed soaring growth with their online sales up 13%, whilst the industry standard was somewhere at 2.1%. I think Asda did the best out of all supermarket clothing chains here in the UK. Apparently, it's the UK's third largest apparel retailer by sales volume, which I had no idea about and probably wouldn't if these headlines hadn't caught my eye randomly because we don't talk about this enough. I mean, Tesco supermarket, I don't know what their like own clothing line is, but they said their women's wear was strong in the last year. The official statement they put out was that its clothing sales grew faster than the industry average, with women's wear being a particular highlight in this, growing by 3.7%. It kind of gives you the bigger picture that these supermarket chains are experiencing massive growth recently and kind of shouting about it and gloating about it. And I wanna examine why. Oh, I wanted to mention as well, M&S did really well this past year. I found a statistic that was like in summer last year, they took 9.5% of the UK's clothing and footwear market. I think perhaps in thanks to that Sienna Miller campaign that I was talking about with the celebrity brands video I did. Interestingly enough, I want to go into the celebrity brands video and like link it here because just like I was talking about in that video where we let celebrity brands go under the radar for whatever reason, I think we also do the same thing with supermarket brands. Before we move on, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the worldwide market too and specifically the US because this is a big thing there and I think they did it first and the UK supermarkets kind of cottoned on and copied. I want to talk about Target especially because apparel and accessories account for roughly 13% of their overall sales. You can see by this graph that that number has grown from 2013 to recent years. I think it had a little setback last year but overall the sales have been really steady there the other place i specifically wanted to mention because it was so surprising to me was Lidl. one statistic i found and actually i couldn't find another statistic to back this up so take it with a pinch of salt but one statistic said that Lidl accounts for a quarter of all clothing sales in Germany. In 2021, they did like a Lidl branded range of apparel, I believe, and it sold out almost instantly. Like they had, I know for a fact, shoes and socks and the socks sold out like almost instantly. People were loving them online. There was like eBay resellers selling them for a lot more than what they bought them for, considering they were only like 99p or something at the time i think you could buy them no i think they were like one pound 98 you could buy them for less than two pounds and people were reselling them at much higher prices it was insane it was like an internet hype that was going on and i just don't understand why so before i dig into why i think they're beating the rest of the market i wanted to do my own little investigation and go see a local supermarket that stocked clothing and see if I could figure out where the appeal came from. So I happened to go to a big Asda. It wasn't too far from me. And like immediately as you entered into the double doors, they were advertising their George range on sale. It was like big, right in the middle. You couldn't miss it as you were walking in. It was like sale, sale, sale. So I went upstairs to where their clothing department is and had a little look around. Um, and what I found was really interesting, actually, there was so many clothes. And I mean, it's a big Asda. It's, it's like the biggest supermarket I could find within a 30 minute journey time. But I was just shocked at the amount of clothes on sale, considering this was not an apparel store. 
do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this was just a corner of the store, but they had at least a hundred styles, I would say. And I, I'm not even counting the shoes. There was so much, there was women's wear, there was children's wear, there was men's wear. And each style they had, they had at least 10 sizes of that style on the rack. So like, just by rudimentary math, you can say there was at least a thousand products in that store, not counting shoes, just clothes. That's an insane scale. Like for a non-clothing store, to be stocking that many clothes. I was looking at, first off, obviously the prices. The prices were really affordable. And I know that is a major pull for some people about why they go. There were like 14 pound dresses, you know, 10 pound tops. There was things on sale for like an insane price, almost like Shein prices. I was looking at the quality of the clothing and it did kind of remind me of Shein and Zara in that you know, not much care had been taken in the quality of the clothing. I mean, the materials they were using was a lot of polyester, a lot of acrylic, um, just based on the items that I picked up myself. There wasn't much, you know, mention of sustainability. They had hang tags on there that spoke about washing your items less to make sure that it wasn't harming the environment and whatever. It felt very like insincere is what I would say. Um, they had a little sustainability thing you could scan. They didn't really have many posters up um, talking about sustainability, but they had like a QR code you could scan, which again, just felt like insincere, almost a barrier to anyone wanting to learn more. They would have to have a smartphone. They would have to have the effort to see about their sustainability. And then it just went to the sustainability page on their website. So wasn't really impressed. Just interesting. I really wanted to just go down and see for myself before I formed opinions. I can see why they're beating the market. And I'll talk about why. Let's talk about why they're beating the market, in my opinion. I think the biggest factor is just convenience. Like you have people walking around already. If they're in Big Asda, you know, we call them Big Asda, Big Tesco here, instead of like, you know, Tesco Express, you're already in the mindset that you're gonna do a big shop, most likely. You've got a big basket with you. You've maybe done it on a Sunday where you have time. It doesn't feel like that much of a barrier. Walking around the store, you're probably gonna just browse in the clothing section anyway. And with prices that low, it doesn't feel like too much of a stretch to just buy something, even if you're not looking to buy it. Also, going back to convenience, there's been a slight death of the high street here in the UK, which has been a bit of a problem. We've had clothes stores shutting down left and right, like the death of Topshop. Um, so many other examples. And for many people, this may be their closest clothing store that they can go into and try things on in real life. Um, and that is quite important to people, particularly the older generation. I think that is potentially another route of convenience. It's either maybe this or a charity store. And some people don't like charity stores. So the other couple of reasons I can think of is obviously the price. We have a cost of living crisis going on. We're so used to low prices of fast fashion now that people don't even question it. They're probably just going in, seeing like a 16 pound jumper that they think could work and probably thinking, well, I'm spending a hundred pounds on a shop anyway. 16 pounds isn't really that much more. Like why not buy it sort of thing. I think also people who go into big stores like Asda are looking for bargains. It's a, I think a fair conception. When you do the big shop, I think you're more in the mindset of, I've got a list, I know what I need, I'm gonna save and whatever. And if you see clothing that you kind of like, and it's for a reasonable, affordable price, then, you know, you're in that mentality. You're like, oh, well, I need a jumper probably for summer, even if you don't, why don't I buy it now? It's only 16 pounds. Also, if you shop on in store, you don't have to pay postage. And that is a thing for some people, you know, you might like justify it in your mind by thinking, well, I could find something maybe better quality in store, but I would have to pay more. And I would also have to pay for postage on top of that. So why not just buy something quickly now? And because it's so low, I can replace it in a couple of months. I'm not saying this is a good mentality, but I'm just saying I understand the mentality. I think also we can't ignore the fact that it's most likely the woman of the family doing the big shop. That's just, you know, traditional gender roles. And I think Asda, 
the one I went to at least, know what they're doing by putting the women's wear in front. You know, all the like summery items, they put that right at the front, all their nicest stuff right at the front. Kids wear was like slightly back. Women's wear was again to the left and right in front. And men's wear was like all the way at the back because they know that women might be more tempted to do that. They're in the shop anyway. Maybe it's just that little treat at the end of the big store, at the end of the big shop. You know, it's not too expensive. You've done a big shop. It's cost of living crisis. Why not buy yourself a cheap garment? Let's talk about the dangers of this mentality, which I'm sure you can probably already guess. This clothing is very obviously fast fashion. It is cheap, it is bad quality, and supermarkets are trying to get you to buy as much of it as possible because they know that they can get a higher margin on it than the rest of their items. People may not realize this though. I mean, obviously in the social conversation, we don't really talk about supermarket brands when it comes to fast fashion. We mainly stick to the brands which are apparel focused first and foremost. We don't really mention Asda and their clothing line when it comes to how bad overconsumption and overproduction is. But they're, ma they're major parts of it. I mean, we've seen the statistics about how much of a stranglehold they have on the UK apparel market. They are a massive part of the problem. These brands are going under the radar because of this, but they have just as much ethical issues as Zara or H&M. I mean, the attempt at sustainability in this store i'd say was worse than a regular zara or h&m store at least they pretend this supermarket i went into at least just really just didn't care i mean most of the labels were just you know not even mentioning sustainability at all the ones that did were using best cotton which has been proven to be you know a bit fraudulent even when they mentioned stuff that they thought was authentic it kind of just felt like a side note it was like oh this is a nice to have sustainability is not nice to have in this day and age it's a must they need to be doing more to address it having one qr code facing the back of your store really quite hard to find i don't know how i didn't even find it my boyfriend did is not doing enough an investigation into the brands that come up most when it comes to items thrown in landfill or taken into the waste colonialism trade and ending up in Ghana or on the beaches. Items from supermarket chains come up frequently. Now, obviously you can't take too many summations from that, but I think it does kind of show the mentality of the person shopping in a supermarket. Maybe they donated it to Oxfam or whatever, but there's a certain volume of clothing that's either being donated or thrown straight away that then goes into landfill or the waste colonialism trade. And a lot of it is coming from supermarkets. So it says something about their cons their customer and what their mentality is towards this clothing, I think. I had a look at some of the brand's sustainability pages, just for laughs, really, just to see what they were doing because I wasn't expecting much. None of the brands address overconsumption pretty much anywhere on their page. Sainsbury's F&F range showed some of their stats for trying to reduce waste. They showed just a 1.6% reduction in waste over eight years. This isn't progress. Why is this on your website? I'd be embarrassed. Are you not embarrassed? From Walmart, they just had the most vague stuff. What does environmentally preferred fibers mean? You need to expand on that. You can't just say that and think people are gonna, you know, swallow it. A judge is not gonna swallow that. Also, a lot of these supermarkets have been linked to better cotton. As I said, it's a bit early to, for them to have pulled out of this considering the whole scandal was only a few months ago. But it's interesting that they're delegating this responsibility of actually better materials to someone else and not really auditing them. I spoke about this in my Substack. M&S website talks a lot about them partnering with recycling schemes. We know that these recycling schemes don't have accountability and often end up fueling the waste colonialism trade. I think I've proved my point. These supermarket brands are not taking sustainability seriously. They're almost laughing in the face of sustainability. It's almost not even on their radar. And I think we need to call them out more. I think we need to bring them more into the fast fashion conversation, just like I said about celebrity brands. They need to be held accountable more. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my little investigation, which is always fun for me. I love going to actual places and finding out for myself what's happening. I wanna do more of these videos. I have some ideas for that, but I would love to hear if you guys have ideas about where you want me to go investigate next, because 
yeah, this just seems like a really fun way to take my channel. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you really, really soon. Have a lovely week. Bye.